So you're looking to get a solar and battery installation. You need to choose the size of that battery. Too small and it won't provide the benefits it should. And too large and you'll have spent money you didn't need to. So how do you work out the best size of your solution then? Stay with me and I'll show you. Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel Gary Does Solar. Creating a high performing and highly efficient solar setup is not just about getting the right number and type of solar panels. It's also about getting the right size of battery or as it's more commonly termed the right battery capacity measured in kilowatt hours. Now if you're not too familiar with the difference between kilowatts and kilowatt hours don't worry I've made this video here for you to get up to speed in a few minutes. I recommend watching this first and then come back here. So how many kilowatt hours of battery capacity should you get? How many kilowatt hours do you actually need? And what will you use all that capacity for? When you request a solar and battery quotation, some installers will come back with 5 kilowatt hours or 10 kilowatt hours or one Powerwall 3 which happens to be 13 and a half kilowatt hours as if somehow those are the standard sizes that everyone should have. Other installers will ask you what your budget is and then tell you to get the largest battery capacity you can afford. Who's right? Well I'm hoping that by the time you get to the end of this video you'll know exactly how much battery capacity is needed for your situation. Before we get into it then, if you're looking to get a solar installation in the UK and you don't know which installer to go with, search through my solar installer directory which only contains installers I'd be happy to spend my own money with. Just type getreadyfor.solar into your browser. Alright then, let's get into it. It all starts here with your electricity bill, specifically using this to work out your average daily usage. On your electricity bill you should see your estimated annual usage. Actually this is my own electricity bill from before I had salt panels fitted to my property and the annual usage for me was nearly 7.5 megawatts which is quite high for the size of my home. Maybe twice what it should be and I still don't know why. If you can't see the estimated annual usage on your bill don't worry just log into your account and look for the section showing your electricity usage. In there try to display a chart showing usage for one complete year and once you've located your annual electricity bill Divide that number by 365 days to get the estimated usage per day. For my bill that works out at just over 20 kilowatt hours per day. So why is this number important? Well if anyone asks me what battery size they should go for here's my golden rule. Make sure the battery capacity covers your average daily electricity usage. Following that rule you might think to cover my own 20 kilowatt hours per day I'd need a Tesla Powerwall 3 plus an expansion pack totaling 27 kilowatt hours or a SIG Energy SIG in store with say two 8 kilowatt hour modules and a 5 kilowatt hour module totaling 21 kilowatt hours. But actually there's more to it than that and there are three important factors to consider. The first is depth of discharge. While state of charge represents the percentage of energy currently stored in a battery, depth of discharge is its counterpart indicating the percentage of the battery's capacity that has been used since its last full charge. For example this battery has 70% state of charge and therefore a 30% depth of discharge. For lithium ion batteries routinely discharging beyond an 80% depth of discharge can significantly reduce the lifespan. The good news though is that most home batteries available today are advertised with 100% depth of discharge. Now that's not because they've overcome the limitations of lithium ion chemistry. Instead they've cleverly included extra capacity that's hidden from the user in order to provide that full 100% usable capacity. Always check the data sheet for your home battery to verify the usable capacity which may be less than what is advertised. The second is minimum state of charge. Even if your battery has 100% depth of discharge, most home batteries have a minimum state of charge requirement to protect the battery and ensure reliable operation. This is the lowest state of charge the battery management system allows before stopping discharge. With my Give Energy battery the minimum state of charge is 4% but on other batteries the minimum requirement might be higher, say 10% or even 20%. And the third is battery degradation. Over time lithium ion batteries lose some of their capacity due to chemical degradation even with proper care. 
After 10 or so years, a 10 kilowatt hour battery might only deliver 7 or 8 kilowatt hours. Check the warranty provided with your battery to see what capacity is guaranteed at the end of the warranted period. Taking all three of these factors into account then, the 27 kilowatt hours available with the Tesla solution could still work, but for the SIG Energy solution I'd most likely need another 5 kilowatt hour module. So going back to my golden rule then, we can improve on the language. Make sure the usable battery capacity covers your average daily electricity usage. Now you might be thinking that my battery won't need to cover all of my daily energy usage because my solar panel generation will cover a fair percentage of that. That's of course true on sunny days, especially in the summer, but it won't be sunny every day and in winter in many countries your generation will be a lot less than summer. So I like to think about a dark rainy day in winter where you might have next to no generation. On such a day, if you're on a smart tariff with a low cost off-peak overnight import rate, you can fully charge your home battery and it will power your home all day using that cheap energy, right to the start of the next off-peak period. And a good example of a smart tariff with a very cheap off-peak import rate is Intelligent Octopus Go from Octopus Energy in the UK. It currently provides at least 6 hours of electricity every day at only 7 pence per kilowatt hour. This means with a suitably sized home battery, taking into account 10% round trip losses, you could be powering your whole home all year round for less than 8 pence per kilowatt hour. I'm a big fan of Octopus Energy and I've been with them myself for more than 3 years. Switching from your current energy provider over to Octopus is very easy. Just use my referral code here and you'll get £50 credited to your account. I'll also get £50 so you'll be directly supporting this channel. A big thank you to everyone who's used my referral code already. Ok, back to my golden rule again. There's a further improvement I'd like to make to it. Make sure that the usable battery capacity at least covers your average daily electricity usage. Now why do I say that? Well firstly it comes down to planning all of your future energy needs, especially as you move towards greater electrification. For example, you might be considering swapping out your natural gas powered hob for an electric induction hob. Or perhaps you're thinking about installing a heat pump to heat your home sustainably, or adding an air conditioning unit for those summer months. These upgrades will increase your daily electricity usage, and so sizing your battery to cover both your current and future needs ensures that you're ready in advance. Secondly, will you need your home battery to keep your home power during a grid outage? Outages can strike at any time and the worst time for you to have one is when your battery's state of charge is running low. And if your battery is sized only to cover your average daily usage, it might not have enough energy left to keep your essential appliances running. Again, by choosing a battery with capacity that exceeds your daily usage, you're ensuring that there's enough stored energy to provide sufficient backup power no matter when an outage might occur. Remember though that not all home batteries have backup or EPS capability. So always check with your installer before making a purchase. And finally, in addition to saving you money, do you want your home battery to help you earn money? Here are a couple of ways that you can do that. The first is via paid export. Many smart tariffs today come with attractive export options that pay you for energy you send back to the grid. For example, the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff I mentioned earlier can be paired with Octopus Outgoing which pays you 15 pence per kilowatt hour of energy that you export, no matter what time of day. But you know the energy landscape is evolving. With wind and solar power surging across many countries, the grid often has plenty of energy during peak solar hours, so exporting your surplus in the middle of the day may not be as valuable as it once was. Instead, I'm expecting export tariffs to increasingly move to time of use models, where you'll earn more per kilowatt hour during the high demand periods like early evenings. You can find out more about these changes in these two videos here, the links are in the description. And so, if your battery has enough spare capacity, you can hold on to all that solar generation until the early evening and cash in on those higher payments. And it doesn't just have to be solar, you can also fill up your battery spare capacity with cheap overnight energy from the grid and export it during those peak evening hours for the same outcome. Then there is the ability to turn part of your battery into a virtual power plant. This means allowing a third party, often your battery manufacturer, energy provider or specialist aggregator to control a portion of your battery capacity. 
They then combine your battery with thousands of others to create a large scale virtual battery that is then able to provide critical services to the grid, like balancing supply and demand. This approach can often be easier and more profitable for you than just exporting energy. Everything is handled automatically, so you can just sit back and enjoy the extra income. By the way, if you're getting a lot from this video, please can you help me by clicking the like button. That way it'll be recommended to more people. And if you hit subscribe at the same time, you'll be the first to see the videos I'm working on right now as soon as they're released publicly. Don't forget to hit the bell icon at the same time though, so that you get those notifications. Okay, so with everything I've said, you're probably thinking that you're going to need a much bigger battery than you expected. And of course, if financial return is your primary motivation, the more you spend on a home battery, the longer the financial payback might be. Okay then, if you're budget constrained, how can you reduce the amount of battery capacity required? I thoroughly recommend you do a bit of modeling on your proposed solar and battery installation before you make your purchase. Because if your array is large enough, then even on cloudy winter days, you might still generate enough energy to avoid needing extra battery capacity, saving you from overspending. For example, if I model my own solar and battery installation using Solarasma, a utility I developed for all my Patreon supporters, I can simulate a cloudy day in December very easily. And you can see that I'm still generating around 10 kilowatt hours. That's potentially 10 kilowatt hours less battery capacity that I would need to buy. Finally then, what I'm liking about some of the latest batteries, like the SIG store from SIG Energy, is that they are modular systems. That means you can buy a certain capacity today, and if you need more down the line, it's very easy to add more modules. You don't need to get your capacity calculations right first time. Check out the video I made about SIG Energy's battery here for more details. The link is in the description. Okay, thanks for watching, and a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters, including these on the terawatt and gigawatt tiers. You actually make all these videos possible. Please share in the comments if you have other ways of determining the best home battery size to get in order that you can help others. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video.